Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. The Salvation Army has built an amazing net zero ready building of the future in Edmonton, Alberta. The funny thing is, they didn't set out to do that. They originally issued a request for proposals that asked for a run-of-the-mill, code-built building. We switched gears. So we did an, a cost estimate in 2020. Um, and the project value came out at 23 million. Then we decided what would it look like if we went to net zero ready, energy ready. And so we did a redesign just as we were going out to tender. The tender amounts came in within a percentage of our original estimate. And that, es that included ground source heating, solar panels, all of our building envelope upgrades. So we decided to go ahead with the extra uh, sustainable initiatives that would get us to net zero ready. When I say Salvation Army, you may think of brass bands, thrift stores, and volunteers ringing bells in the malls at Christmas time. But the Salvation Army is the largest non government social service agency in North America. It has a budget of almost $1 billion in Canada and Bermuda alone. Sally Ann helps 2.6 million people per year and does this with professional staff and 500,000 volunteer hours. Grace Village will be a vibrant community. It'll be made up of three segments of our population, the first one being our recovery stabilization unit for 32 beds, 71 beds of transitional housing, and 72 beds for men and women of supportive housing. And Grace Village is an innovative, new, net zero ready, 175 unit complex, but it didn't start out that way. Early on, when Michaela Jones asked for a net zero ready design, she was told it wasn't affordable, but she never gave up pushing for it. We had a design, we were ready to go to tender, and we were just questioning whether or not we could do more with lowering the operational costs. Unsatisfied with the conventional design, the team revisited their goals. We sat down and we said, what are our goals? How do we be a global citizen in, within this context of climate change? And as a team, we decided that a net zero energy ready would be an achievable goal for this building. What happened next surprised Michaela. Then we um, did a redesign. We added ground source heating. We added a tougher build, building envelope and uh, bigger insulation, uh, tighter windows, triple pane windows. Um, and we went out to tender and the price came in within a percentage of our original cost estimate. So we knew that we were on the right track. So they went forward with the net zero ready design. The project wound up costing about 4% more, but the majority of that was spent to overcome some site challenges that they encountered. So I've gone back th through the numbers and it's approximately $900,000 premium we paid on a $23 million construction budget. So that's about 4%. So we will make our money back in four years with our lower operating costs. It's pretty incredible. So how did they do it? Project manager Donnie Croning explains. So there's three top uh, sustainable efficiency measures that we have, one of them being the geothermal system. So this geothermal system utilizes 36 wells. Those wells go 500 feet deep into the ground and then they come to these five headers. And then those five headers distributes that heat or cooling depending on the season to 108 heat pumps throughout the building. Now, the cool thing about that is these heat pumps are up to 700% efficient on cooling and 400% efficiency on the heating side of things. And on top of that, it doesn't use any natural gas. After temperatures soared to a scorching 37 degrees in the summer of 2021, the Salvation Army realized they needed to add air conditioning. This would have cost more to build and more to operate. The heat pumps cool even more efficiently than they heat the building. So the second cool, sustainable, efficient feature of this building is the envelope system itself. This wall, we have spray foam, uh, five inches deep of spray foam. And then on the outside of the wall, we actually have rock salt insulation. And this rock salt insulation is another three inches deep. So overall, we're looking at about nine inches deep for a wall system. And uh, together, it achieves a R44 value, which is really, really good. 
So the third key sustainable measure at Grace Village here is the solar system. Uh, the solar system is a 236 kilowatt system utilizing 512 modules. Uh, the system provides the majority of the power for the building, including its electrical and heating systems. This all adds up to big savings. For electricity and natural gas, we're looking at $240,000 a year of savings. And over the lifetime of the building, say 25 years, that's about $6 million. It helps the Salvation Army because it lowers our operational costs. And the, the way that this project was kind of, the way that people bought into this project was that we can easily fundraise capital funds, but it's very difficult to get operational funds. And by lowering our operational costs, we ensure the sustainability of programs and of the Salvation Army mission. The Salvation Army has 1,400 properties across Canada. For architect Michaela Jones, this project is a game changer. My goal is that this project is a precedent for the Salvation Army. So we've done it, now we can do it again, and we can refer to this project and incorporate what makes sense for other projects. 30%. Even 40% of our carbon emissions are from buildings. So if we don't tackle buildings, um, we're not going to get to where we need to get to by 2050.